The longer you wait to touch a girl, the more awkward it will be when you do. There's a scene in the movie Happiness where Philip Seymour Hoffman is sitting on the couch with the girl. He gradually tries to reach his arm out to touch her, and it's so awkward and so cringe that before he even gets there, she goes, This isn't working. So, with touching women, this is what you want to avoid. And that's why you need to touch the girl right away, almost as soon as you meet her. Because again, the longer you wait to touch the girl, the more awkward it will be when you eventually do. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you touch a girl you just met? And more importantly, how do you do it without being creepy and without making her uncomfortable? Well, that brings us to innocent touch number one, which is to lightly touch her arm as you're talking to her. And the way you want to do this is not just to stare at the girl in silence and then like suddenly lunge over and touch her on the arm. That is how you'd creep her out. No, instead what you want to do is just quickly touch her on the arm or pat her on the shoulder briefly to emphasize things you're saying in the conversation. And this is very common. It's not weird at all. It's not sexual. You'll often see charismatic people touching everyone like this when they're talking to them, both men and women. And this is the absolute best way to start touching a girl because it's totally innocent. And right away, just by doing that, you've broken the touch barrier. You've bridged that gap. And that means later on, when it's actually time to touch the girl in a more sexual way and escalate to a kiss, you don't end up in that Philip Seymour Hoffman on the couch nightmare type scenario. You've already established touch, you've already been touching the girl throughout the conversation, and you know she's comfortable with it, so when you later go to escalate, now it just feels like the most natural thing in the world. All right, now the second innocent touch to turn a girl on is still relatively innocuous. This is where you're sitting beside the girl, you just lightly pat her on the knee or the upper thigh. And again, you do this while you're talking to her as part of the conversation. So you lightly pat her on the leg to emphasize something you're saying or a point you just made, and then you take your hand away again. And with this one, you can adjust and calibrate it to be more intimate and more sexual depending on how far along you are with that particular girl. Like, if the girl seems to be into you, you can test it by kind of patting her on the knee and then letting your hand rest there for a few moments. And again, you want to do this while talking to her. You're not just sitting in silence while you're touching her like this. You're still engaging her in conversation, but you're just letting your hand rest on her knee or her upper thigh. And as you're talking to her, you're watching her reaction. Now, if she gets uncomfortable or she kind of squirms a bit, then you immediately remove your hand, obviously. But the good thing is you really haven't caused a ton of offense here, even if that does happen. You know, you only rested your hand there for like half a second, but now you know that's a boundary and this girl isn't ready for any more escalation yet. And so each of these touches I'm going to give you, they're really like a little mini test to see how comfortable with touch the girl is. And this is why you want to touch her in very light, innocent ways at first, and then only gradually ramp up as she accepts more and more of your touches. And this is what stops it being that big, awkward lunge to kiss her out of nowhere that a lot of guys do, and which is just a total fail. But it's also how you actually gauge her responsiveness before going too far. You know, case in point here, I was at a club a couple of weeks back. I approached this really hot young blonde girl. She was sitting down, sat down beside her, I started talking, and I just lightly patted her on the knee as we were talking and she didn't seem uncomfortable so I tested a bit further you know next time I let my hand rest in her knee for a few moments and she's still talking to me she's still smiling she seems very happy with that and so after a little bit of banter I move my head closer to hers I look into her eyes pause for a few moments then I kiss her and we start making out now anyone watching this would be like what the fuck this guy just started making out with this girl after like 20 seconds of meeting her how the hell did he do that well in fact anyone watching would probably actually just assume we were already dating but we weren't I had literally just met this girl 10, 20 seconds before and then we're immediately making out. So again, using this method of just doing these innocent little touches to test where she's at and how comfortable she is with escalation, if the girl is into you, it lets you find that out quickly so you can escalate very, very fast. All right, touch number three is one of my absolute favorites and this is where, say you meet a girl at a bar and you want to move her somewhere else, like you meet her in the smoking area and you want to move her to the dance floor. And generally speaking, just as a side note here, you should be moving girls around a lot, you know, whether you're meeting them in cold approach, whether you're meeting them on dates, whatever it is, this is probably the number one most valuable technique to get laid. The more environments you move a girl through, the more she feels like she knows you. And so the more places in the bar you lead her through, the quicker she'll feel good about going home with you and ultimately hooking up. Now, there's a lot of ways to move a girl. You know, guys will sometimes talk about putting the hand on her lower back and leading her through the crowd. But the one I really like to use and this one's not even so much about touching the girl so much as getting her to touch you which is much more powerful because it creates more investment on her part so what i do here when i want to move the girl is after i've been talking to her for a couple of minutes i hold out my arm in a kind of like a loop and then I gesture towards it for her to loop her arm through mine, if that makes sense. And, you know, by the way, I didn't find stock footage that exactly demonstrates this, but just try to follow what I'm saying and not necessarily what you're seeing on screen. So again, I hold out my arm in a loop. I gesture towards my arm so that she looks at it. And then I get her to loop her arm through mine. 
So now notice this little distinction. This is really important. I don't grab her arm. I'm not looping my arm through hers. I'm holding my arm out and getting her to loop her arm through mine. Very, very smooth. And what this means is that if she refuses, well, that's absolutely fine. I haven't actually touched her, so I haven't even made her uncomfortable. But if she agrees and she loops her arm into mine, now I can lead her elsewhere and get her into isolation where I'm going to have a better chance escalating with her and becoming more sexual. So get her to loop her arm through yours, then lead her somewhere else. Very, very underrated move. Now, touch number four, this is again another example of my favorite principle of touching and escalation with girls, which is instead of touching her, get her to touch you. And it is just so much fucking smoother, I'm telling you. And the example of this here is you're talking to the girl, say you're standing side by side, and you take her arm and put it around your shoulder. That's it. Very, very simple. So obviously, you know, if things are going good with a girl, you're allowed to put your arm around her shoulder and that can be great. It's a great way to escalate. But again, this is just such a smoother way of doing it. You know, instead of putting your arm around her, you take her arm and put it around you. And again, the beautiful thing about this is if you've misjudged it, you know, if the girl isn't comfortable yet, then she can just take her arm away and it's no harm, no foul. You haven't really intruded on her personal space as much as if you would wrap your arm around her. But what you'll find is in most cases, the girl will be totally comfortable to put her arm around you. And then when she does that and she lets her arm rest there now you can put your arm around her as well at the same time so now you're standing side by side with her with your arms around each other in a kind of a half hug and that's a very very good position to be in you know you're establishing a lot of physicality the girl is getting very turned on by this physical touching by the warmth of your body but you've done this in a way that is just super fucking smooth super non-invasive non-aggressive and all the while you've been building compliance and investment in her and gauging her level of comfort at every stage all right Touch number five, this one is lethal. This one is the diabolical move to end all moves. And if you want to make out with the girl, this is the absolute best way to do it. So this one again follows the same golden rules the last two, which is instead of touching her, get her to touch you. And in this variation, what you want to do is, you know, the end goal you're trying to end up at here is hugging the girl. You want to be holding the girl with your hands in her waist so the two of you are body to body facing each other and ready to kiss. Now, one way you can accomplish that is to literally just grab her by the waist and, you know, hope for the best. But I prefer not to do that. So what I do instead is I'm talking to the girl, I'm facing her head on, I take her by the hands and then I put her hands around my waist. So, so fucking money. I cannot tell you how many girls I pulled with this one simple move. So again, to repeat, don't put your hands around her waist. Instead, take her hands and put them around your waist. And if she does that willingly and she lets her hands rest there, then you can put your hands on her waist as well. And now the two of you are fully touching body to body, face to face. And that's obviously a very, very good position to kiss the girl from if you decide to. And that brings me to touch number six, which is the first kiss. Now, the first kiss is very important, not necessarily because it turns the girl on, but more because it establishes beyond any doubt whatsoever, like, okay, this is on, we like each other, we're attracted to each other, there's absolutely no doubt about what this situation is. And look, you don't necessarily need to kiss a girl in the middle of the bar in order to take her home that night and have sex. You know, I've pulled quite a few girls who wouldn't let me kiss them, but when we got home together in private, they were DTF. But generally speaking, I always try to go for the kiss with a girl as soon as I see the opportunity, because once you've kissed her, it just kind of establishes like, okay, it's on. On now. And generally nowadays, I don't want to even try to take a girl home until I've hit that milestone of the first kiss. Again, not to say it can't happen, but I've been in a lot of situations over the years where, you know, I was hitting it off with a girl. We spent hours together. I took her home and then back home, I got to kiss her for the first time. And she's like, no. And it might be because she had a boyfriend. It might be because she literally just thought I was being friendly the whole time. Like she thought we were just friends. But I found out it just saves a lot of time to kind of check that box of the first kiss before I start focusing on getting this girl to leave with me or even before I take her number. Like it's very rare now that I'd even bother taking a girl's number if I haven't kissed her. And the good thing with this, by the way, is when you do kiss a girl and take her number, you can text her the next day being like, you're a pretty good kisser. You know, something like that. It just calls back to that. It gets her immediately remembering oh, I kissed this guy, I better text him back. So it kind of cuts down flakes as well. All right, so how do you actually go for the first kiss? When's the right time to do it? How do you kiss her without being rejected? Well, there's two tips here I want to cover. And by following these, I almost never get turned down when I try to kiss a girl. I mean, it's I actually can't remember the last time I got turned down. So first off, as a general rule, you should only try to kiss her at a conversational high point. And that means right after she laughs at a joke you made, for example, that's a great time to kiss her. Or say you tease her a little bit, you run a little bit of push pull and maybe you make fun of her. And she's kind of like mock outrage. She's like, you know, stop, you know, kind of like playfully hitting you, but she's gazing in your eyes and she's got a huge grin in her face when she says it. Well, that's a great time to move in for the kiss as well. So again, kiss her at a conversational high point. 
You know, if there's been an awkward silence, if you haven't spoken to each other for a while, that's not the time to try to kiss. And you know, those silences are completely fine. Very often I'll be sitting with a girl and it goes silent between us for a while and that's nothing to worry about so long as you don't let it go on too long. But the main thing to remember is the time to kiss her is when she's laughing at something you said or she's just being highly engaged in the conversation. Also, one last really good tip about kissing a girl, about when to kiss her, when the right time to kiss her is, basically when a person is aroused, their pupils dilate. This has been found again and again in psychological studies. It's actually like the basis on which scientists measure arousal in the first place. So when a girl is aroused, her pupils get big. In other words, that little black dot in the center of the eyeball, that gets big when she's feeling aroused and horny. And when a girl is not aroused by you, when she's still skeptical, when she's defensive, when she feels a bit uncomfortable, her pupils will generally be small. And this is a really, really good way of knowing whether it's a good time to kiss her or not. You want to be constantly looking in her eyes, looking at those pupils, and as soon as you see her pupils are large and dilated, that's when you move in for the kiss. Now, on the other hand, if you're thinking about kissing her, but you're not sure if you should yet, all you got to do is check the pupils every time. If her pupils are small, do not do it. It means she's not quite there yet. Just keep talking to her and teasing her and building attraction until her pupils get big, and then you know she's aroused and horny, and then you can kiss her. And what's really cool about this is if you get in this habit of always checking the girl's pupils, sometimes, especially in bars and nightclubs, often at parties, raves, concerts, you know, any kind of like loud, hectic environment where people are more sexual, well, sometimes you'll approach a girl, you'll look in her eyes, and you'll see her pupils are massive. And in a lot of cases, you can actually go for the kiss and start making out with her right then and there without even saying a word before you've even exchanged names. And you'd be surprised how common that actually is and how easy it is to do. So I know this last tip is kind of off the topic of like touching, but this one is probably even more useful because it shows you when the right time to touch her is, when the right time to kiss her is. And that is anytime you see her pupils are dilated while she's looking at you. So check her pupils, constantly look in girl's eyes, do this with absolutely every girl you meet, make it a habit. The moment you see your pupils get big, that's the time to strike. That's the time to move in for the kiss. And again, this can happen very fast. You know, sometimes girls are just horny. You know, sometimes you're just exactly her type, whatever that is. And so in many cases, by checking the pupils, you can literally just skip past all the small talk, skip past all these other touch moves and just get straight to the fun stuff of French kissing a beautiful woman. All right, so that's a little quick kind of crash course on how to touch a woman to turn her on. And basically what I've given you here are three sort of phases of touching that you want to be moving every girl through. You start off with more innocent touches like the on the arm and the knee. If she's comfortable with that, you move on to slightly more intimate touches like putting your arm around her, putting her arm around you, and um, taking her by the hands and then putting them on your waist. And if she's comfortable with that, then at that point you can usually move towards kissing her, you know, or kissing her neck, being more intimate, hugging her, things like that. Now, after you've kissed the girl, my recommendation is don't go any further with touching until after you've got her back to your place and the two of you are alone. Kissing is as far as you should go when you're with a girl at a bar, a party, a club, a first date, wherever you meet her. You don't really want to go further. It's not good. You only want to go further when you've got her into isolation and the two of you are alone somewhere close to a bed where you can actually seal the deal. All right, so hopefully you now have a much better idea of how to get a girl turned on, how to amp up her sexual tension quickly, and ultimately how to go from approaching her to getting her into bed very, very fast. However, there's a lot of stuff I left out here because there isn't time to cover in a short little video like this. For example, you know, what do you actually talk about with her? That's an important one because you can't just be touching her without talking. Like you have to be simultaneously talking about interesting and engaging conversation topic. Or another one is how do you get her to start investing in you and chasing you? You know, how do you get her logical mind engaged as well as just her physicality? And how do you get her so turned on that she will literally be begging you for sex? And I answer all those questions in my best-selling program, Friends with Benefits. Friends with Benefits is a step-by-step -step blueprint which shows you how to get any girl into bed and turn her into your <sighs> buddy on command. You know, a buying buddy, a friend with benefits is a girl who you're friends with, but who you also have sex with whenever you like. And this type of relationship is amazing because there's no expectation of commitment or monogamy on either side. You know, you don't have to see her every day. You can literally just call her up every couple of weeks or months whenever you're horny and she'll come over to your place to bang. And the great thing about having friends with benefits is you can literally have a harm of girls like this. You know, you can have like three or four or five girls who you just rotate between them every week. So you don't have to go out to bars or clubs when you want to get laid. You don't have to mess around with Tinder. You've just got like three to five hot young girls on your phone. And whenever you want to get laid, you can simply call them up and she'll come over. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, click the link below to watch my full free guide on how to get a friend with benefits now. And this all comes down to a simple three word technique, which gets any girl obsessed with sleeping with you and obsessed with getting your approval. And it works no matter your looks, money, or age. Click the link below and watch the video to learn the secret to making any girl beg to be your bang buddy, even if she's way out of your league. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.